My guest tonight uh, starred in the acclaimed Netflix series, Orange is the New Black. She also created, wrote, and starred in the Emmy award-winning Russian Doll. And she's just directed her first Netflix special, Sarah Cooper, Everything's Fine. Please welcome the very talented and very busy Natasha Leo. Natasha, how are you? Uh, <laughs> it goes wild. Are you, I, no, the crowd's going nuts. They're going nuts for you. They're going nuts, these people. I mean, it does, it does look like, in the air. Looks like you should be saying, come on down, no one can beat our prices. Nobody can beat our prices. You gotta see this special. We've got the best prices in town. <laughs> I love the way you do Zoom. Everyone else is just like this. You bring energy to Zoom the way it's supposed to be. You, you, get, you gotta get in there, you know what I mean? And then create the sensation. Look at all the rings and you're clutching your purse. You do look like you're waiting for a bus. You look like, in a, you know what I mean? You're a lady waiting for a bus. My goal is to be a very hip, very old woman, you know? <laughs> I think I'm trying to age into something between Penny Marshall and Jodorowsky. Those are my goals. <laughs> and I think I'm getting close, closer each day. You're doing great. And I also, so many people in this town are doing all this kind of crazy stuff to pretend they're 25. Uh, not you, you're going to go for it. You're going to just go crazy, eccentric old lady someday. Yeah, someday. I would say today, you know. Are you getting through this thing okay? I know you are with, I'm gonna call him your lover, Fred Armisen. Oh, I wasn't sure which one. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm kidding. How are you and Fred doing? Uh, because this is a strain on couples. And you, you know, I've known Fred a long time and um, I love him. He's a little eccentric. How is, is he tough to live with during this uh, time of quarantine? You know, he's, he's excellent at, uh, at things like quarantine because he's very organized. Uh, you know, we're different. Uh, I'm, like a, I'm like a bear. Um, you know, I really like to hibernate and then I like to do a lot of activities. Uh, Fred's more like a, a white rabbit or something. He, um, he's taken to wearing uh, jumpsuits. He has like, Jumpsuits in nine colors. It's all, it's a onesie. We got a picture. Uh, one of our producers tracked this down. This is a picture of Fred in a, what looks to be uh, a scene from the movie Chernobyl. Yes. What, yes. It looks like he's coming out of the reactor and saying, uh, there's a problem. This is what, this is the feeling I'm getting from this picture. Is this the onesie, one of the onesies that he wears? No, that's one of the onesies. That's a rust. He also has a cream, a black, a green, a mustard. This is more of a, uh, we did your scan and your yeah. scan, uh, we have some bad news for you, but I'm gonna try and cheer you up with this wave. This is a medical kind of onesie. This is a real cutie pie character, this guy. I gotta tell you. You know, I'm, I'm uh, concerned about something, which is I know that you, you told me a while ago, I think the last time I saw you, that you were gonna quit smoking this year. This is a tough year to quit smoking. Didn't pan out. Um, you, know, you didn't quit. It's, it's not the time. I was reading a few studies that said um, it actually it sort of protects your lungs to smoke um, because, you know, from COVID because uh, it, I think it toughens them up. No. So uh, I just thought that medically it wasn't the best idea or the best time. Oh, this was that famous Marlboro study that just came out. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? I just am uh, oh, yeah. I just was trying to kind of, you know, that's why you took up smoking. Yeah, I took right? up, like you, I got all excited. I thought, I got to toughen up my lungs. So that <laughs> you toughen them up. Um, so I started chain smoking filtered, unfiltered cigarettes from the 1930s. Okay, yeah. this is why Robert Mitchum's still alive, as we know. Okay, <laughs> so... He's a well-known survivor, and uh, he's patient zero. So, yeah. listen, I mean, these are, obviously, these are uh, atrocious times, and, and you know, it's, it's uh, harrowing that we're all living through this as if it's uh, reasonable. Uh, you know, I actually think, in many ways, I've never been happier. Um, you know, there's things I don't miss. I don't miss, uh, I never was interested in going to a, a brunch with anyone or meeting somebody for coffee. You know, <laughs> you like there's You're not a social person. You're not a very social person. You, as you said, you like to hibernate. 
You want to go into a, into a cave with a lot of salmon in your belly and just sleep through the winter, right? That's what I like. Uh, but, uh, but Fred is more active and that keeps me young. Could you have more rings on right now? Would that be possible? Is there room for more rings? I'm gonna level with you. I, I rarely am out of anything other than, you know, t-shirts and panties, okay? So the oh. idea that I had an opportunity to actually put on all of my rings <laughs> and that there's no need here for like a, a full length, you know what I mean? That would give any indication of I like how it wacky it. I'm really enjoying that everything is just um, so surreal, Conan. I really, it, it does it for me. Tell me, uh, tell me what are the things, cause you've told me a lot of what you don't like what are like the three things you like to do during, you know, uh, what, what makes you happy? If you just had to boil it down to three things. Uh, smoking, okay. swimming, mm -hmm. and Zelda. The, uh, the, the video game, yeah. I play that for about, I would say 12 hours a day. I mean, in place of sleep, cause I'm a busy person, but um, yeah, I've been, you know, uh, just periodically renting these, you know, uh, shitty houses uh, in the valley that are just, you know, they're bad, but they have a pool. Uh, and because, like I'm saying, Fred runs around, but I just move from, you know, the bed to the balcony, uh, you know, to like, you know, do conference calls and change. It's not a healthy lifestyle. So I've taken to getting these, uh, you know, weird places and, uh I love to swim uh, because, you know, my joints are not great. And uh, I like to get in the water, move around a little. I think the Obama quote like seven years ago where he was like, you got to exercise 20 minutes a day. And so I swim and I think about Obama for yeah. 20 minutes. And then, you know, I play Zelda for another seven hours. Uh, you know what, it's so funny because you are a young woman. You're a young, vibrant woman, Thank but you. you're coming across you only have, in the boobs, thank you. you. Have, what? I said only in the boobs. <laughs> I got boobs for days. I got boobs like a, I, I, I'm telling you. Um, uh, but you, you channel weird. this, you do channel this woman who's uh, in her 60s and has a Zabar's bag uh, yeah. and, and is wearing 95 rings and a bunch of cats. That's who you be, that's somehow Tom's your personality, even though you were this, this very young, vibrant, attractive woman, you, it seems like you can't wait to be an old crazy lady. You just can't wait. You know, and why should I? I mean, I don't have to. I just feel like, you know, we make up these rules. You know, I think about uh, a young Gary Oldman playing Sid Vicious at the end of City Nan Sid and Nancy singing My Way. And I think, you know, uh, what's the problem here? There is no problem, there's only solutions. So. How did you get from how did you get from <laughs> Gary Oldman playing Sid Vicious to There Are No Problems? How, there's no connection there. You know what, Conan, get in here, honey. Get in here, okay? I want to make sure we talk about Sarah Cooper. Everything's fine, of course. I'm so glad that that uh, you are behind this project uh, directing. This is very exciting because she's obviously this phenomenal talent. She blew up online. I think people are very excited now that she's got this uh, this project, and it's so cool that you're you're directing it. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, I have this uh, this great production company called Animal Pictures uh, with uh, with Maya Rudolph. Uh, I think we sort of felt like, what's the thing to launch this thing? And all of a sudden, you know, when Sarah hit, uh, she just felt like the only thing that was really resonating or, or connecting with this moment, as far as a, a feeling of relief that encapsulated the sort of, uh, you know, universal feeling of what the hell is going on here, that she was sort of providing some sense of relief. And I think the uh, goal of the special, you know, we never really um, say Trump's name in it. I think more so than sort of trying to, to comment on something obvious was uh, trying to get to the heart of, you know, this kind of uh, social paranoia and the sort of doom scrolling, sinking feeling that we all have kind of in bed as you're slowly melting into it, wondering where this all, ends and you know trying to you know tap into that through this kind of network patty chayefsky sort of as a gag um you know um fred holds up a sign as her producer that's uh the actual sign from Ilya kazan's face in the crowd you know to show that the ratings are up thanks to talking about uh you know uh sort of shitty politics and and i, I just really think we wanted to kind of 
tap into the sort of the the way that we all feel and sort of uh, Sarah has done an extraordinary job of providing some relief and some sort of explanation to this uh, absurdity. I mean, it is so effing weird that we are, you know, that this has become some uh, degree of normal somehow. Yeah. No, what I really appreciate, appreciate about what she's done is I love silly comedy and she's able to be very physical and silly and use her abilities to make you laugh and at the same time acknowledge how insane everything is right now. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very weird, you know, and it's a, it's a real curiosity of, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I joke, but it's, a, you know, uh, what is, what is jokes? What is time? What is a future? What is making plans? You know, it's, uh, it's a very weird moment that we're in. And it's, uh, it's uh, very, um, really like levels the playing ground, like we're, we're in this collectively and sort of have to either. Uh... So anyway, you know, uh, jokes aside, I mean, I guess that really is when I say I'm relieved, I, I'm just relieved to see that we're, you know, we've s sort of stopped uh, lying other than of course the fake news aspect, we've sort of stopped lying a little bit as a society, which, you know, hopefully gets to uh, the heart of the truth and maybe we can, you know, begin to build a better world and so on, which is great because I have so many children and I need to build a future for them. Well, you know what I love? Whenever you're using your hands in Zoom, I feel better about our future. So the more- It's the kids, Conan, the kids. I'm not even listening to what you're saying anymore. I'm just seeing this and I feel liberated and excited because- <laughs> you, want, you want a flat screen TV? I'm gonna get you a flat screen TV. Just let me know what kind of a camcorder you need and I'll get it for you. And you're saying that I, no one can beat your prices. That's, I'm very excited about that. Thank you so uh, much. We have a clip here from Sarah Cooper, Everything's Fine. Anything we need to know about this clip before we show it? Uh, the duality, the gravitas and the comedy that comes with the one and only, the living legend that is Helen Mirren. And now for our top story, an exclusive look inside that now famous Access Hollywood bus. She used to be great. She's still very beautiful. I moved on her actually. You know, she was down in Palm Beach. I moved on her and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try and her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. Oh, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was marriages. And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. Just, she wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. She's your girl's hot as shit in the purple. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> yes, the go. Donald is good. <laughs> oh, my man. And we're back. <gasps> that was a great clip. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, um, I think Sarah really wanted to uh, uh, do this one, um, you know, because it's the one. And somehow, you know, I, it's, it's crazy that it was so insane when we first heard it. And uh, that it was not the thing that shut it all down. Um, and we're still here. Uh, you know, I mean, just as, uh, as a woman, it's uh, pretty devastating to uh, realize that these are the things that we're uh, okay with accepting. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I do think people say uh, laughter is the best medicine. I, like many people, disagree. I think yeah. medicine is the best medicine. Well, every viewing of this special also comes with a, a bottle of amoxicillin. So you can <laughs> get it on both sides. Okay. <laughs> Sarah Cooper, Everything's Fine, is now streaming globally on Netflix. Natasha, you are very talented. You are very busy. You're always a delight to talk to. It's not often I get to speak literally to uh, a woman who's time traveled from 1935 with all that moxie and pep. And uh, you always brighten my day. So thank you for doing this. Always a joy, Conan. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. See you later. <laughs>